Hello, good evening, my friends. Welcome to another English class. Let's see who do we have here. I know some of you are moving, maybe. Some others are maybe finishing dinner. And some others are already ready for the class. So here we have uh, Guillermo. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you tonight? Mm, I feel great. Oh, that's perfect. Sounds great. really good. On Wednesday. Perfect, Guillermo. We have <laughs> Oscar. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing? Everything okay? Yes, okay. I'm terrific. Oh, perfect. It sounds really good. Thank you. What about Evelyn? Hi, Evelyn. Hi, teacher. How do you feel tonight? Uh, fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Noe, good evening. How are you feeling tonight? Okay, Noe, maybe you can hear me. Puedes escucharme, Noe? Hello, good evening, teacher. How do you feel tonight? I feel amazing. Thanks. Sounds really good. Thank you. Okay, my friends, uh, this is the class number three. The topic is can for information and possibility. Okay, can for information and possibility. This is the class number three. So it means we have 17 classes left, okay? So we are in the middle of the first unit. Remember that for Friday, you should have finished uh, unit number one, okay? So can for information and possibility is the topic uh, that we're going to study tonight. Before I check the attendance list, let's see how tall are you? ¿Qué tan alto son ustedes? Okay, so we can express this in two forms. You can say I'm 175 or I'm 167, or you can say my height is, my height, mi altura es, my height is 155, okay? Uh, you can say 1.75 or you can say 175. It's uh, like similar, okay? Let's listen some of you. What about Jose Andres? Hello, Jose. Tell us. Hello, good evening, teacher. Okay. What's going on there? I'm sorry? Um, how tall are you? Yeah, what about you? Yeah, how tall are you? Uh, my height is maybe it will be as far as I know, one seven exactly. Oh. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, sometimes we don't have the exact uh, quantity, the exact number, right? But we have an idea. Okay, thank you, Jose. What about Daniel and then Katia? Hello, Daniel. Hi, my height is more or less um one sixteen seven. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. What about Katia and then Oscar? Um, um, I get over <laughs> one fifty one fifty seven. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, 50, yeah, we can have like a approximately number, right? No, uh, yeah. not, not necessarily <laughs> the exact number. Okay, thank you, okay. Katia. Oscar and Noe. My height is 168. Thank you, very nice. Noe and Evelyn. So my height is 165. Good, thank you. Evelyn and Guillermo. My height is 68. 68 or 168, right? 68, 68. Okay, thank you. Guillermo and then Gustavo. 
Mm -hmm. okay, perfect. My height is 175. Good one. We go with Gustavo and then we move mm -hmm. to Rivas. Okay, Gustavo. My my height is one one sixty six. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rivas and then John. Okay, Rivas, you go. My height is one eighty four. Okay, perfect. John and Doris. My height is one eighteen. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Doris, what about you? Good evening. My height is uh, 163. Okay, thank you. Yes, as Salvadorian, we have like standards about uh, how tall are we, but we have like some exceptions. There are some people that they are really tall. There are some others that are very short. So it happens. So thank you for your comments. I know that we have different types of height. Remember height, my height. And um, we don't have the exact number because we we are not like checking this number every time that we can. Maybe we have an idea, but we are not like checking this. What do maybe we can check is our weight, nuestro peso. That's something that maybe we are checking uh, at least once in a month, once in yeah, in three months or something like that. Okay, we move to some useful phrases that maybe we, they can be applied in every conversation that we have or in different contexts. So here we have, well, 10 useful phrases. And we're going to use these phrases for uh, the attendance list, okay? So number one, uh, well, number 11 is, it can wait 12 could have been worse, it could, okay? Remember that these words are pronounced like this, could, right? And we have some similarities. Okay, here we have could, should, would. These are modal auxiliaries, so, eh, auxiliares modales que no sirven pero tienen un patrón they have a pattern for the pronunciation could, should, would quiere decir que la O y la letra L son silent son silenciosas, no se pronuncian okay? could, should, would well um, number 13 it was quite a job it was quite a job 14 it's not go. It's no go. Uh, 15. It's a matter of time. Esta frase, it's a matter, puede ser aplicada por it's a matter of time, it's a matter of money, it's a matter of feeling. Como es una cuestión de dinero, una cuestión de emoción, una cuestión de, de tiempo, de esfuerzo. Entonces, it's a matter, that phrase can be applied in different areas. 15, just about, just about. Ya vienes? Are you coming right now? Just about. Uh, 17, just now. Now, just now. 18, no one's place. No one's place. For example, I know my place. Know your place. ¿Verdad? Uh, 19, know somebody by sight. Conocer a alguien eh, a simple vista. And also, we have love at first sight, amor a primera vista. I don't know if that's true. Depends on you. Maybe you think yes. Some other people say no. But the point is that love at first sight, amor a primera vista. But here we have no somebody by sight. And uh, 12, let's clear it up. Let's clear it up. Normally, when we have a letter T between two vowels, the T sounds like an R. Entonces, podemos decir, let's clear it up o let's clear it up. La T suena como R. En, en cuando está, hay una T en medio de dos vocales. Let's clear it up. Okay? 
So in this case, I'm going to check the attendance list, calling your name one by one. Remember to say hi, hello, good evening, present. I am here. And then uh, you can pronounce one of these useful phrases. Michelle. Hello uh, there. This these are these are imperative expression, yes? Uh, yeah, it can be. For example, just it's about. No yeah, yeah, it's no go, just about, uh, just now. Because imperatives are mm -hmm. similar than orders. Los imperativos son los que no tienen mayor significado, sino que mm -hmm. es algo fugaz y que a veces hasta puede ser casi como una orden o, o algún apuro. Okay? So, yeah, that's it. Let's clear it up. Ese es un imperative. Definitivamente. Vamos a aclarar eso. Let's clear it up. Yeah. So, though, that can be another function of these phrases. Thank you, John. Uh, Adi, Beatriz. Do we have Adi here? I don't know. She's here. Maybe not by now. Ana Cristina Hernandez. Hello, Ana Cristina. Okay, I guess she's here, but she doesn't reply. Uh, Elias. Hello. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, your phrase. Okay, we go with Rivas. Present teacher, my phrase is, is not go. Thank you, Rivas. Okay, Claudia. Um, okay, what about Daniel? Present. My phrase is, uh, let's clear it up. Thank you, very nice pronunciation. David. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. My phrase is just now. Perfect. Doris. Are good you there, Doris? Good evening. Um, now one place. Very nice. Thank you, Doris. Evelyn, hi. Thank you. Okay, one of these phrases, Evelyn. Repeat, please. I'm sorry. Repeat, please. Okay, eh, no sé si te, te has fijado, siempre cuando llamo en, para pasar lista, siempre pongo palabras o frases, en este caso son frases, me dices present, hi, y luego me dices una de estas frases. Okay, me dices una de esas frases, one of these phrases. Ah, ok, sí. De estas que estamos viendo ahorita. Sí, sí, así es mi metodología para la, hacer lista siempre. Uh -huh. Who's, ¿Cuál? No. Who's ok. No. Thank you. And do we have Graciela? Mm, no. Guillermo. Hello. Present. Thank you, Irma. Okay. You go. And it's a matter of time. Perfect. Uh, Jose Andres. Uh, <clears throat> teacher, I want to know how can I pronounce number 13, teacher? It was quite a job. Or... Yes, it was quite a job. Mm -hmm. okay. It was quite, yeah. You can say, for example, mm -hmm, you can say it was quite difficult. It was quite easy. After quite, you can use an adjective. So uh, it can be like a, um, like a quantifier. Uh, it, uh, it can be used like to um, make emphasis on something cuando quieras hacer como un énfasis, como que algo sí pasó de tal manera. Fácil, difícil, ¿ok? So that's it. Thank you, José. John. Hello, John. 
Good evening, teacher. I identify um, it's a matter of time. Perfect. Uh, Katia, Maria, are you there? Present, teacher. Thank you, Katia. And it can wait. Perfect. Uh, Maritza, do we have Maritza here? Yes, present. Thank you. Uh, just about. Perfect, thank you. Okay, Marvin, I don't know if Marvin is here. If not, we continue with uh, Noé. A teacher, the number 18, now one's place. Yes, thank you. No one's place. Thank you, Gustavo, and then Oscar. Okay, Gustavo. Present teacher. Hello Good evening. There. Good evening. You. Yes, Perfect. Okay, uh, Oscar. Are you Present. There? Thank you, Oscar. Yes. Nobody by sight. Yeah. And uh, what about well, Rosalie is not available. Susie, I don't know if Susie is here. And Teresa, Noemi. Okay. Well, we don't have them now. So we have to move. And let's see what we have here. We have a lot of things to study. The question is, have you received inheritance Has recibido herencia. We have different types of inheritance. It can be economically. It can be something physic, articles, house, car, money, di 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 different aspects. Okay. So what you have to answer? Yes, I have. No. I haven't. Y este haven't es diferente a don't have. Porque aquí estoy preguntando, ¿has del verbo haber? ¿Has recibido herencia? ¿Algún tipo de herencia? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Okay. I need you to write uh, in the chat of Zoom to know one of this, one of your answers, cualquiera de las dos me escribe, ¿verdad? Sí o no. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Okay, I'm going to wait. Remember that inheritance uh, are very common in El Salvador, uh, even in, they are very common in Latin America, but in Europe and Maybe in the United States, yeah, they happen, but not as common as here in El Salvador. Sí sucede, pero no tan común como acá. In Europe, it's kind of difficult, well, different. Because kids, okay, sons and daughters are not too dependent of parents. But here in El Salvador, yeah. Como que dependemos bastante de los padres. Okay? So that, that, that's really different. If we compare, okay, Guillermo says yes, Daniel no, Katia no, Elias yes, Noe no, Carlos Rivas no, Oscar no, Maritza no, Doris Noe no. Okay, okay, Guillermo, in your case, is something that you have now? Todavía tienes esa herencia? Something that you received yeah. from your parents? Yes, teacher, my house. Oh, that's perfect, really good something that's that's really nice so well it's uh something that it is a big gift right from your parents yes. perfect Guillermo. thank you and here we have elias i i don't know if you are busy elias creo que está un poco ocupado elias but if you can answer it could be like right to, to listen your your opinion the rest of you say no Yeah, in my case, I can say no, I haven't. Mm, maybe something that we can mention is like our education can be like a type of inheritance, but it's something more philosophical, 
¿verdad? Porque normalmente la herencia puede ser algo más físico, ¿ok? Algo más concreto. But well, that's it. Thank you, my friends, for, asking, for answering. We're going to continue with this topic later because we have some speaking activities, right? You already know. So, what do we have here? Um, here we have different features of some product. Something that we were studying yesterday, we were taking some, we were taking some of the characteristics similar to weight, dimension, and quantity. I'm going to call you, some of you, to tell me or to read, to read one of these characteristics. Ya les voy a solicitar que me lean un par de características. Okay, here we have like features and products. Okay, these are these are features, weight, dimension, and quantity. And we have products like tablets, television, refrigerators. Maybe we can have um the particip Guillermo's participation, please. And uh, if you can select one weight, and uh, maybe the quantity of dimension. Which one, Guillermo? Uh, weight. Okay, let's talk about tablets. How many grams is the weight of the tablet? It's 117. Thank you. What about the television? Uh, 112.43. Yeah, pounds, libras. Pounds. Thank you. Oh. That's it. Yeah. And what about the refrigerators? Uh, three, three hundred and forty pounds, or three, hundred eighty pounds. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Or because that's like a, like a parameter, right? Thank you. Okay. And we're going to have these. Uh, Jose Andres, maybe can you help us by using by saying the dimension of the tablets, television, refrigerators. Here we have centimeters, or we can say cm centimeters, and here we have inches that are pulgadas. Okay. What about the tablets? 19.3. I am gonna try. Yeah, please. If not, uh, I'm going to tablet. help you. Okay, pro, uh, teacher, uh, sell or just tell the things that what I see? That I... Yeah, the dimension, for, for example, the tablets. Uh, read the dimension of these tablets, okay? Okay, okay. Tablets, filters, the products is tablets. Weigh one seventeen hundred uh, grams. Uh, you, you, your part is dimension. This one, okay, okay, okay. yeah, please. 19.3 symmetries. I didn't know how can I say for ah, by you can say by okay, 19.3 by symmetries by 13.77. 7 symmetry, 1.03 symmetry. Yeah, centimeter. You can say CM or centimeters. Symmetry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Jose. Very nice. We are going to have Katia, please. 
What about the television? You're going to talk about inches. Vas a hablar acerca de las pulgadas. In inches. Okay? 41. Okay. Uh, 41.3 inches. Um, by? By, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. 26.7 inches. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and here we have this, uh, 48, okay, one and eight uh, inches, similar. And here we have the quantity. Maybe we can have uh, Maritza, please. The quantity of tablets, what is the quantity? 200. What about the television? 100. And what about refrigerator? Uh, yeah, uh, 50, right? 15. Okay. Uh, 50. Mm -hmm. 50. 50, porque 15 is 15. Thank you, Maritza. Okay, now take a look at this. Um, here we have this. Let me check something. Okay, here we have some questions. I need you to help me reading. Noe, please, could you help me reading question number one? Can one person? Can one person store all the televisions oneself? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see the weight of the televisions. Televisions weight 100. 12 pounds, 112 libras. Do you consider one person can store? ¿La persona puede ordenarlas? No, teacher. No, it's right. difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. It's because uh, the quantity, it's too... It's well, too much heavy. It's, yeah, it's much heavy. Más que un quintal, right? <laughs> so it's yeah, really weak. And also it's delicate. It's fragile. I mean, que es frágil. Thank you. Um, what about if we go here with Daniel? Please uh, read question number two. Where? Ordenarla. Uh, read. No, ordenar. We can, tengo que repetir o orden. No, leerla. Read significa oh, leer. Sorry, read sorry. The, 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 the question. Well, yeah. Can you... Where can you store the fifth refrigerator? The refrigerators, yes. Let's see. Refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, here we have the dimension refrigerators. Yeah, maybe in, in a truck, maybe, or in a warehouse. It's kind of, kind of big, this thing. And we have this. Maybe we can have the participation of David. Can you help me uh, reading? Read uh, question number three, please. Okay, teacher. Can, can you, you store the can you store the tablet or on shelves? Shelves. Uh -huh. En los estantes, Shelf. verdad? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Let's see the tablets. The dimension. Yeah. Can be. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, right. 19 centimeters. Yeah, you can do it. Thank you, my friend. Mm -hmm. We go now with this. Let's move to the picking activity. In your opinion, is her inheritance, inheritance mandatory in families? Es obligatorio la herencia en las familias? What do you think? Example, money, house, lands, uh, cars, whatever, okay? Do you consider it is mandatory? Consideran que es obligatorio, okay? So uh, I want to hear some of you, maybe five, six or seven opinions, and you tell me. I know you have uh, like different opinions, and that's really important for this activity. So raise your hand if you have an idea. Okay, Guillermo. Let's listen to Guillermo and then... David. 
tell us what do you think about well in my opinion if your family can give you an inheritance it's great because that help you a lot but it is not possible there is no problem for me okay so depends on every family right it is not like a big problem for you if it is possible yes right thank you guillermo what about uh, david and then daniel okay in my opinion teacher the best in Inherit, como, como se pronuncia, inheritance, eh, inheritance, inheritance is a good education in family affection. Eh, money, house, and land are not required. The thing can be adquiring on the path of life. Okay, very good point. Uh, David says that you can acquire this things right like money house lands but inheritance like good education values and principles are like the best you can do for the next generations thank you david what about if we listen to daniel and noe uh, in my case it's not an obligation i am happy with what i have i do not complain Okay, good point. So you didn't receive inheritance, right, Daniel? And you're happy what, what you have. Thank you. Okay, uh, Noé, and then we go with Rivas. In my opinion, it is not an obligation of our parents to give up inheritance. You got to work for your own things. Oh, good point. Work for your own things, effort, right? So, yeah, another good point. Uh, what about if we listen to Rivas and then Elias? In my opinion, yes, because it will avoid ambition, problem in the future and confrontation. Okay, so that's something that you mentioned very present in different families. There are some confrontations, there are differences when the the time of inheritance comes and you say yes well and when you say yes here is a, a, a point like the division the separation of inheritance of the other family members but well good point thank you we go with Elias and Evelyn okay in my opinion it's not an obligation but is the opportunity exists in the family it is welcome of course everything in with a legal framework and without no light money and property okay yeah it is not an obligation but if you have the opportunity of course you can do it okay yeah that's it well, thank you, Evelyn and John. In my opinion, not precisely on occasion they leave them to the will they have it children. Okay, yeah, it depends, right? And something important as well, as you mentioned, is children, if you have how many, well, that's another stuff. Thank you. John, what about you? Um, my last word, it, it depends. Is there are a similar errors, uh, the money will be better. There will be fewer problems when it's come to distribute. Distribu distribu uh -huh, Aha, distributing, yes. Distributing, um, although the Best is a house when it's a person. Okay, uh, good point, John. Very, very nice. Sometimes when the, inher the inheritance is a house, it's very different than money, right? Because in the case of Guillermo or some others who receive a house, it is like very welcome and you appreciate, right? You say, thank you. But uh, people have different points of view and they say, okay, let's sell this house. 
well, I need money. I have debts. I need something to, well, I need something in my life, right, John? It can happen. So, well, yeah, thank you. Remember that inheritance, it is not an easy topic, especially with the parents have accumulated money or accumulated actives, activos, like lands, cars, okay, houses. So, very, very, very important uh, to reflect about this. So, if you notice, um, well, we're going to continue with this activity in a moment, but I sent you some pictures in the... I send you some pictures in the WhatsApp group so you can check it if you want. And there are some, well, there are, I'm sorry, I'm having some difficulties with this internet. Okay, so something and that it is really useful is the chart of have, el cuadro que les mandé del have y del has. Entonces, en este caso, le vamos a dar una revisada a esto. Solo permítame unos instantes. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, and the verb I have, verdad, ya lo teníamos acá, que lo habíamos estudiado. You have, have, the only difference is in the third person and las terceras personas that we use has. On the contrary, we have to use have, have, have for everything. Now, for the negatives, for the negatives, uh, what we have to use, listen, is doesn't, right? Doesn't have, doesn't have. But for the rest, don't have. Para el resto se tiene que utilizar el don't have. Para eso creo que ya no tenemos dificultades, right? Y para las preguntas or questions, in this case, vamos a utilizar eh, el auxiliar do y el auxiliar does. Entonces, En las primeras partes acá ya tenemos, ¿verdad? El have y el has, el don't y el doesn't. Entonces, como pueden ver acá, solo vamos a utilizar dos tipos de auxiliares, ya sea el do o el does. Casualmente, el have se utiliza tal cual, tal cual. También en las negativas, miren, have, have, have. Solo que para las negativas se utiliza el doesn't y el don't. Y para las preguntas se utilizan el do. Normalmente para todos, a excepción de does para las terceras personas. Ok. So that could be the, the entire explanation about this. La explicación pues completa con respecto al uso del have y el has. Ok. Do we have questions so far? Preguntas sobre esto. Tenemos dificultades, me comentan. ¿Alguna duda? Por ejemplo, oh, teacher. Yeah. Sorry. Por ejemplo, if you are talking about some article, article TV, computer, cars, mm. um, it's the same. Yeah. <clears throat> the car has some engine problems. El carro tiene algunos problemas del motor, okay? The car the car has some engine problems. But if we talk about 
three or four cars. The cars have some engine problems. <clears throat> Ese sería el I punto. Mm -hmm. That's good. That could be the, uh, the detail. Okay. And even in, in negative, okay. If you are selling imagine, imagine that está vendiendo un carro. Okay, yeah. The car doesn't have engine problems. And negative, right? The, the cars done have engine problems. Yeah. So that could be like the, the part of some examples. And we're going to check now another form or have. Vamos a ver otra forma del have que es muy común. Something that you can check on lyrics especially. Pueden revisarlo en algunas letras de las canciones o también en algún eh, le, frases que son informales. Ojo con esto. El verbo have got. El verbo have got es el mismo que el have. Es el mismo en el tema de significado, pero en escritura cambia. Teacher, ¿y por qué me está enseñando eso? Because it's part of English. Es parte del inglés. Cuando ustedes dicen, I have got, ejemplo, I have got to work. Tengo que trabajar. Es como que digan, I have to work. Entonces, aquí viene otro detalle. El mismo, las mismas terceras personas cambia. Ya no es have got, sino has got. Pero de lo contrario es lo mismo, ¿verdad? I have got, uh, puede ser, hablemos de, de cosas pro, que, que son propiedades. Por ejemplo, you have got four cats. Tú tienes cuatro gatos. Es igual que decir you have four cats. Es igual, ¿ok? El have got es muy común en el idioma informal, en letras de canciones y es parte también del inglés. So, have got. Eh, you have got para decir en tercera persona he has got, she has got. En la negativa, aquí como es un frase informales, utilizamos el I haven't got, you haven't got, eh, he hasn't got. Ok, entonces vamos a hacer algo bien sencillo. Vamos a ver lo afirmativo primero. Sure. Yes. Dime, Noé. And you can, you can do questions with the have got. Yes, you can, you, you can do questions. Le voy a mostrar rápidamente. Y que esto es parte. Parte del inglés. Have you got? Entonces, el has she got, ¿ok? Have we got, ¿ok? Ya vamos a estudiar eso, pero sí, es parte como de las preguntas. No los quiero enredar tanto, solo vamos a enfocarnos en las afirmativas y negativas y vamos a ver un poco después las interrogativas, como pregunta no es, es parte. It's part of English. Have you got? Have you got a dog? Tienes un perro. Have you got a cat? Tienes un gato. So, y les voy a mostrar algo que ustedes ya, ya seguramente han visto que son las contracciones con esto. No sé si alguno de ustedes ha visto esto, ¿verdad? I've got, you've got, he's got. Esto es parte de, de, de lo que común, seguramente lo han visto. Entonces, vamos a utilizar ahorita las afirmativas. We're going to make sentences, very simple sentences. For example, vamos a utilizar para que esté todavía más genial las contracciones, ¿ok? Recuerden, I have got, yo tengo. You have got, tú tienes. He has got, él tiene. ¿Ok? Cualquiera utilice. Ejemplo. Ah, voy a utilizar. Eh, she's got a nice car. Ok, that's my example. Pueden utilizar cualquiera, no necesariamente las terceras personas. Pueden utilizar, you can use, for example, we have got, they have got. I recommend you to use articles. Algunos artículos. Le recomiendo que utilicen eso. Ok. Here's my example. She's got a nice car. You can talk about fruits. 
eh, vegetables, eh, things at home, okay, pets, pueden hablar de mascotas, okay, whatever you want. I'm going to wait for the sentences on the chat. Recuerden utilizar la apóstrofe, the apostrophe, okay, no the accent, no, no el, la tilde. Okay, I'm going to be waiting for your sentences, my friends. Okay, let's move and let's listen what you got. Oigan bien, what you've got. ¿Qué es lo que tienen? Noé, you start, please, my friend. Uh, we have, we want to listen your sentence. And then Guillermo, please. Okay, I've got a new model for my car. Perfect, perfect pronunciation. And Guillermo and Daniel. Okay. Um... I got a dog. Thank you, Daniel and David. Nice. Okay, Daniel, are you ready? Because we don't, we can't listen. I can activate the sonido. Activate the microphone. Hi, sorry. Okay, no problem. She she's got a dog. Yeah, nice. Thank you. David and Maritza. Uh, he has got, he's got a big house. Mm -hmm. Nice. Maritza and John. He's got a new work. Nice. Uh, aunque podría I'm ser good. a new job. Mm -hmm. Okay, John and Oscar. I got very hungry. Okay. What do you mean by hungry? Angry. Okay. Angry. ¿A qué te refieres con eso? Eh, ira. Mm -hmm. Anger. Sería anger. No se Sería en, en, anger. Es eh, eh. anger. Ajá. En, en, okay. Anger. Yes. Ok, thank you. Eh, Oscar en Elías. I got a nice work. Good. Elías en Rivas. He's got a new job in San Salvador. That's nice. Eh, Rivas and Katia. We've got a beautiful house. Nice. Eh, Katia and Gustavo. He's got a big house. Good. Eh, Gustavo, please. I got a nice house. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you notice, uh, after God, it is very common that we find a vowel. So the sound of the T changes into R. For example, for example, by la última, Gustavo dice, I've got a nice house. Pero también se puede decir, I've got a, I've got a new house. ¿Verdad? Eh, Maritza dice, he's got a new work. Y también se puede decir, he's got a new work. Entonces el gora, ¿verdad? Es el, el que normalmente nosotros 
y decimos que significa gara, I've gotta go. Entonces ese suena bien americano, si se dan cuenta. Es este mismo, I've got. Ok, let's move. Here we have some exercises. Tenemos unos ejercicios acá. Ok. Um, let me check. Have got or has got short form. Ok. Um, depends on you. Ok. Have got or has got. Cualquiera de las dos vamos a utilizar afirmativas. Ok. Have got. ¿Verdad? Or has got. Depends on you. Remember that we use has got for third person. Okay? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds so you can check uh, these sentences and the, then we go with the participations. Okay, my friends, some volunteers here. If not, I know who can participate. I'm going to select, well, here we have Guillermo. And then Noe. Okay, Guillermo. Okay, the first no. one I have got. Okay. Thank you. I have got number one. Yeah, thank you. No sé si va a caber. I want to ser más pequeña. Let me check this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Noé and then Elias. You have got a brother? Yeah, you have got a brother. Thank you. Okay, good. Elias, please. He has got a watch. Good. Thank you. Okay, let's listen to Katia, please. Then Gustavo. Michel has got a computer. Very nice. Okay, we go with Gustavo and then we go with Rivas. It, it has a big kitchen. It has got. Sí se puede con has. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pero en este caso, como el ejercicio es con has got. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. En este caso podemos hablar de una casa. Por ejemplo, it has a big kitchen. Okay. Thank you. Ok, who's next? Aquí tenemos arriba, me aparece. ¿Verdad? We have got a new football. Ok, thank you. And then we go with John. Okay, John, and then Oscar. You you have you have uh, uh, you have got a new bag. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, Oscar, and then Elias. They have got a garden. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, okay, Elias, and then we go with Maritza. I have got their friends. Three friends. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Maritza, and then we go with Jose. We have got a mobile. Yeah. And Jose, the, the last one, please. She's got a cat. Okay. Contractado, yeah. She's got. She's got. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As you notice, it's very, but very simple. Not complications, right? Okay. Let's move now with, we continue with uh, opinions about inheritance. Sure. We, yes. John, tell me. The, the structure is subject had got a bear infinity plus complement. Yeah. Eh, mm. Aunque en este caso, normalmente, si, bueno, si, si revisamos, no necesariamente debe tener un, un infinitivo 
puede ser. Eh, he's got, uh, digamos, si tienes algo, if you have a, a possession, for example, a motorcycle, mm -hmm. ah, eh, you have got, you ha you've got a motorcycle. Tienes, ¿verdad? Entonces, it can be an infinitive or it can be a, a noun, okay? A possession. You've, okay. you've got a pet. Yeah. It can be applied for both. Okay. Thank you, John, for your question. Okay. In your opinion, in is inheritance mandatory in families? Remember that I have a, an attendance list. So I know who has already participated. I have already checked. Ya lo, ya lo chequeé. A quienes ya participaron. Here we have some others. And we need to listen to your uh, opinions. For example, I would like to listen to Jose. And then we are going to listen to Doris. Jose, what's your opinion about this topic? Uh, me teacher yes okay in my case teacher as far as i remember um my grandfather maybe a house where we live in now and maybe my mom a car i didn't know really you know okay but uh, do you consider that inheritance is mandatory or not? How can you talk about teacher? Inheritance and I hear how can I pronounce that word? Mandatory or inheritance? Inheritance. 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 Okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, I think teacher isn't mandatory. Okay. Okay. It's not mandatory, isn't? Thank you. Uh, right. Some people say right on your own. Mm -hmm. On your own, yeah. May by your own effort. Thank you. Okay. Maybe we can listen Doris and then Katia. I don't know if Doris is there. If not, we're going to listen to Katia. Not yes, Katia. Ah, ya pasaste, verdad, Katia? No, no. 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 Todavía tenemos gente honesta. We have honest people now. <laughs> okay, yes, Katia. There is. <laughs> okay, in my opinion, this is not mandatory, but this is important to about legal or family problems that arise in the future to the different points of view of each on the does involved in whatever yeah. absolutely agree not mandatory but important and necessary for legal processes right very but very important thank you and what about uh, maritza and then we go with gustavo Okay, Maritza. I do not consider it uh, mandatory, but if there is inheritance, it is necessary to distribute. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Distribute equally or balance distribution, right? Imagine you have three. Uh, kids, uh, three sons or, or daughters, and uh, you have a house and a car, and you want to give it, give these things to them, it could be better legally and balanced. So in the future, they are not going to have some problems or discussion, debates about the things that you gave. Right, Maritza? Very nice. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And what about Gustavo and then Oscar? Hello, teacher. In my Hello. opinion, opinion in a, in a, in a, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Yeah. Es bien, bien tricky esta palabra. Inheritance. Sí, aquí se lo voy a poner. Inheritance. 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 Yeah. 
inheritance is not a religion because age a person moves word to and yeah mm -hmm. uh, each person must wear a uh, and cheer what they want in life in life okay what they yes what they want and they can do right in life thank you very nice uh gustavo what about oscar in my opinion mm -hmm. Inheritance is not mandatory. Like you say, in our country, is not common. But in my case, uh, with my sons, I, I like do it. Mm -hmm. In your in your point of view, right? I like to do it, yeah. But maybe not so common, and you have to take into account different aspects when the the come the moment comes, right? So very good for okay. you, Oscar, because you want to give something. For your kids, right? Because yes. of your effort. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. And I don't know if Claudia is ready or Ana Cristina. I don't know if you're ready. I guess no, right? Okay. Let's move uh, with the next uh, short topic. That's very, but very simple. How to use can for information or possibility. Okay, so uh, we have two, two aspects. When you use can for information, uh, you are asking for uh, data or information for a future use. Necesitas saber algo. Por ejemplo, where can you stock all the new products? Or when can she stock all the new products? Okay. Now, you can say another, another type of question. When can you send the report? Estás preguntando, ¿cuándo puedes enviar el reporte? When can you send the report? Or you can say, when can she uh, check the product? Okay. I need to make um, questions related to your reality. For example, in my case, my boss can ask me, mi jefe me puede preguntar esto, when can you send the grades? ¿Cuándo puedes enviar las notas? So that's something that it happens to me, right? Uh, my boss or my coordinator, my supervisor is asking for information. ¿Cuándo puedes enviar las notas? Necesito que me hagan ustedes preguntas related to your own reality. ¿Qué le pueden preguntar al jefe cuando puedes enviarme? When can you send the report? O cuando pueden enviarme las facturas, the bills. Cuando pueden enviarme el proyecto. Where can you say? So I need you. I need that in the chat. Okay. When can you? Pueden utilizar esa. When can you? And then uh, the rest of the action. When can you check the warehouse? When can you do the inventory? Cuando puedes hacer el inventario. When can you supervise the production? When, okay? Si quieren utilizar where, of course, you are free to do it. Okay, if you want to use it, no problem. But think about what your boss or supervisor asks you. ¿Qué les pide? Cuando les pide que algo, ¿cuándo pueden hacer esto? ¿Dónde podemos hacer esto? Okay, so this is an example related to your own reality. I'm going to wait for your questions, please.
excellent verbs, excelente verbos. Here I'm showing you, presenting you some other verbs if you want to use them, okay? Teacher. Yes, Jose, tell me. Yes, I just want to ask how can I say literally or close cuando va a vender? When you gonna buy a sell or I can say when can you? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Yeah, when can you sell the product? Mm -hmm. or that's when... all. Yeah, that's all. That's simple. Because your boss is asking about a simple information. ¿Cuándo puedes vender eso? Or when, eh, yes, when can you sell the stock products? Los productos en stock. O los productos de, 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 la, de la warehouse, de la bodega. Something like that, okay? Yeah, very simple. Okay. Don't complicate. Nice. Okay, let's listen to some of your sentences. That's part of your day-by-day -day reality. And we're going to start here with Guillermo and then Noé. Please, Guillermo, read your question. When can you send your report? Nice. Noé and then David. When can you finish to pick the car? Okay, yeah. Thank you. David and Elias. When can you print the emails? <laughs> nice. Elias and Maritza. Okay, Elias. Okay, if Elias is not ready, let's go with uh, Maritza and then Rivas. When can you check the bill? Yeah, that's that's nice. Eh, Rivas and Katia. When can you do the, the shower? Mm -hmm. Nice. That sounds good. Katia and Evelyn. When can you finish the assignment project? Mm, the assigned projects. Okay, yes. Esto se escucha como urgente. <laughs> like very important. Evelyn and John. When can you send me the bank? Okay, John, and then here we have Rosali, if you can. John? When, when can you send the reports to the accounting department? Oh, yeah, very specific. Thank you. Uh, Rosali, and here we have Noe again, right? Rosali, are you there? When, when can you activate documents? Okay, thank you. And Noe, what about you? You have another, right? Um, when can you give me the check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need it. I need the check. When can you? That's very important. Okay, Um. now here we have the other, uh, on the other hand, we have can for possibility. That's something you not know, different. Can you stack all the products? And in this case, um, if you notice, 
you just to the to the previous question that you do you just have to omit this word solo tiene que omitir la palabra where or when and then you have can or possibility simple like that for example um Evelyn said, when can you send me, send me the band? Simplemente, can you send me the band? Um, eh, Maritza dijo, when can you check the bills? La pregunta para posibilidad sería nada más, can you check bills? Or, Elias, when can you visit Santa Ana clients? The question could be, can you visit Santa Ana clients? So, in this case, the answer is yes or no. Yes or no. Simple like that. Okay? So, we're going to complete this. Read the following statements to write equations about it. So, here we have six uh, answers. They are answers. So, we have to create the equations. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Le doy un par de segundos para ver qué pregunta podemos hacer acá. And then what we can do. So I'm going to select some of you. Please try to have one or two options. Because sometimes the, the classmate selects the option that you were thinking to, to answer. And you say, hey, teacher, come on. I was thinking about it. Yes, Jose. When can you visit Mexicanos clients, customers? Uh, sería, when can you visit Mexicanos customers or Mexicanos clients? Mm -hmm. That's it. Le doy un par de segundos para ver esto. Okay, so to start this, I'm going to select some of you. For example, maybe we can have David, maybe. Do you have any idea of one of these um, questions? Okay, teacher, number one, uh, can you store them in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. What could be the question? Can you okay. store them in the back room? Okay. La respuesta es, you can store, uh, store them in the back room. Mm -hmm. Vamos a agregarle un poquito de sabor. Can you store the product? Pero como están mencionando que los puedes ubicar en el cuarto trasero, sería, can you store the product? Y le agregamos where, ¿ok? Where can you store the product? ¿Dónde puedes uh, ubicar el producto? Ah, you can store them in the back room. Okay? Close. Bastante cerca. Thank you, David. What about if we go with Katia? I know Katia me está llamando con la mente. She's sending a lot of vibrations. So, Katia, let's go. And then Maritza también. She wants to participate. Let's try. Vamos a intentar. What number? Okay. Um, number two. Number two, yeah. You can't uh, move all the televisions. Ah, and, and, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. Ah, number three, sorry. Number three, yeah, let's go. No yes. problem, uh -huh. let's do it. Uh, I can't, sería, um, can you can, okay can you all the television I don't okay know. <laughs> what is the verb what's the verb in there um move move mm. yeah can you move mm -hmm. 
All the television. All the TVs, yeah. No, we can't. We can't move all the television. Yeah. Okay. Simple like that. Yeah, don't complicate. Thank you. Okay, we go with uh, Maritza and after Maritza, we'll go with Daniel. Number two. Yeah. Can you sign the form? Okay, solo que en lugar del you, vamos a utilizar otro pronombre. We're going to use another sí. pronoun. Sí. The can, yes, can we are talking she? about she. No, can she? Uh, can she? Sign. Can she sign the form? Yeah. Can she sign the form? Yes, she can. She can sign the form. Thank you. Okay, we go with Daniel and then we go with um, Evelyn. Can I say the number six? Please, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can I give you information of the product? Okay. Very nice. But maybe to sound direct, para sonar directo, en lugar de I, vamos a utilizar can. Can you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you give uh, information mm -hmm, of the product? Yeah, very nice. Daniel, yeah. Can you give info about of the pro? Yes, I can. I can. Thank you. Okay, we go with Evelyn and then Noé. Um, can they? Okay. Can they? The box tomorrow. Okay. Okay, very nice. La pregunta, la respuesta es, they can pile up the boxes tomorrow. Tomorrow significa mañana. So, antes del can están preguntando cuándo. When. Yeah. When can they pile the boxes? They can pile up the boxes tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, Noah, please help us with number five. And we finish this very okay, short. Okay, number five. Where can you store the 90 cars? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, simple, right? All right. You can store the 90 cars on a warehouse. Definitely, it is. Thank you. So if you notice, there are some questions using can. That's for uh, possibility. And where, when, and that they are asking for information. Se pregunta por información. Okay, um, let's move. We have an, another speaking activity here. Um, here we have Rosali. Hello there. Welcome back. Thank you. Everything Thank okay? You. Siempre es Rosali. Y yo te digo Rosali. Mm -hmm. Rosali. ¿Cómo que es Rosali? Eh, I don't know. Yvonne. The, the, the second line. Uh -huh. And you, what do you prefer, Rosalio or Yvonne? Um, los dos me gustan, pero más. Bo Está bien, Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have your opinion about this? If uh, inheritance should be mandatory? I don't know. We have different types of opinions, and all of them are okay. Um, in my opinion, it is not. It's not an obligation. It is a personal decision um, because. No sé cómo se dice la palabra. Nadie se. De pelear, nadie pelea. Nobody fights, nobody, nobody argues. Fights. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only. <laughs> Very good point. I don't know if you noticed there are a lot of families in which uh, the parents, brothers and sisters have difficulties and problems because of this. A very delicate. So, uh, debates, oh, okay, okay. Here we have two words, debates or discuss. These are like synonyms. In English, when we use 
this cause, it is not for fighting. It is debating. But if you want to express that some people are fighting with words, you have to say argue. Cuando las personas argue, they are fighting, but orally. Cuando utilizan el argue, es que están peleando verbalmente. Pero cuando utilizan el discuss, es simplemente discutir, pero no de, 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 de pelea. Es como debatir. Pero en here in El Salvador, we say, ah, eh, están discutiendo. Ah, they are fighting. Se están sacando hasta la, hasta la suegra y todo eso. Ok. Thank you. We continue. Now with a very, uh, what, short speaking activity. We're going to talk about categories. Ok. So in this case, uh, maybe we can have screenshot, tal vez podemos tener una captura de pantalla de esto, please please, please, please and, and here we have categories look at this, uh, the example of number one says like this London Washington they're both capital cities entonces aquí dice verdad Londres y Washington ambas son eh, ciudades capitales So, we have categories. You have to join similar words. Y luego, pues, pueden decir. Pueden decir, este, si son, si forman parte de una categoría. Ok. Okay, I'm going to send you to the breakout rooms. Los envío. Thank you, John. Los envío a los breakout rooms. Y este, me organizan las categorías. Then we come back. Okay, my friends. Siguiendo el ejemplo. Mm, sí. Um, una pregunta, teacher. I have a question. Dime. Eh... Es, es solo encontrar las palabras de cada categoría ahorita. Ya lo que, lo que demás dice escribir las oraciones usando, eso ya no. Sí, sería, sería, no, sería esto, lo que estoy mostrando acá. Ajá, ajá en eso encontrar las segundas. Sí, no sé si alcanzan a ver la, la oración de aquí abajo. ¿Sí? Yes. Sí. Oh, yes, 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 yes. London, sí. Washington, they are both capital cities, yeah? Sí. Ok, así sería el ejemplo. That's the, well, that's okay. the example. Tienen que hacerla así, ¿verdad? Ok. No sé si se alcanzó a ver. Se alcanza a ver. Ahora sí, quizás. Porque en la, en la otra imagen quizás estaba muy lejos. Thank you, John. Perfect, my friend. Okay, I'm going to send you to the breakout rooms. Then we come back and we compare the answers that we have. Okay. See you in a moment, my friends.
Bien, ya les envié las, este, las solicitudes. Ustedes me dicen si les ha llegado, si tienen dificultades. No sé si Gustavo ha tenido dificultades. Al parecer no.
Okay, my friends, we have just uh, 20 minutes and we finish the class. But before we go to the last part of this class, I need you to help me by saying the categories you have. I need you to mention only one, okay? We're going to start with Guillermo and then we go with Yvonne, okay? So, uh, Guillermo, mention one category. Uh, football and golf, they, they are both sports. Perfect, thank you. Football and golf. Okay, we go with uh, Rosalie. And carpenter, secretary, mechanic, they're all jobs. Jobs, right. Thank you. That's uh, That sounds really good. Uh, Daniel and Katia. What others you have? Daniel? Uh, kitchen and bathroom, there are rooms. There are rooms, thank you. Katia and Noe. Potatoes and onions, they're, they're born the vegetables. Uh, vegetables, thank you. Yes, they are. Noe and David. Uh, Buzz and Lori, they are both vehicle. Thank you. Good. David, and then we go with Maritza. Uh, football and tennis, they are both uh, sports. Sports, okay, thank you. Evelyn, and then we go with Jose. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Maritza and then Evelyn. Maritza. Mm, if North, West, South, their cardinal point. Okay, Or thank direction. You. Or directions, thank you. Okay, Evelyn, and then we go with Jose. Number uh, six, second, four, three. Mm -hmm. And there are numbers, right? Okay, and Number. Jose, and then we go with Oscar. Okay, Jose, what you got? Okay, Jose, maybe not ready. Let's go with Oscar. Okay, um, chemistry, green grocers, supermarkets, their bought shops. Thank you. Okay, and what about John? Are you there? Yes, the uh, lion, monkey, cat, uh, they are both um, animals. Yeah, the, they are both animals. And we have capital cities, that is the first category, right? That we have here. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to uh, complete the this, uh, the, well, the listening part. I'm going to repeat reproduce two times um, audio, try to identify words, phrases, main ideas. Okay, so let's listen. I'm going to play it two times. This photo is very old. I think it's from 1910 and it looks very yellow. The man at the back the first one on the left is my grandfather. His two brothers are Charles and William. William is the one with the open jacket. My grandfather's sister is called Violet. My grandfather was about 22 when this photo was taken. They were outside the family home in Chicago. Two years after this photo, my grandfather got married to a friend of Violet and my father was born about 10 years after this photo. 
My grandfather worked for 27 years in a cinema about three blocks from this house. He started selling chocolate bars and soda drinks to people watching silent movies and finished as the manager. He was an incredible man. Let's listen one more time. This photo is very old. I think it's from 1910 and it looks very yellow. The man at the back, the first one on the left, is my grandfather. His two brothers are Charles and William. William is the one with the open jacket. My grandfather's sister is called Violet. My grandfather was about 22 when this photo was taken. They were outside the family home in Chicago. Two years after this photo, my grandfather got married to a friend of Violet and my father was born about 10 years after this photo. My grandfather worked for 27 years in a cinema about three blocks from this house. He started selling chocolate bars and soda drinks to people watching silent movies and finished as the manager. He was an incredible man. Okay, we're going to listen to some of your participations. I know you identified uh, many ideas, phrases, sentences, words. Maybe we can start with some of you. Mm, you can raise your hand or I can select. Maybe we can start with Oscar and then John. Oscar, tell us what you've got. I got uh, the grandfather as he works in the cinema of 27 years. Yeah, grandfather of him. Yeah, a lot of years in okay. the cinema. Thank you. John and then Rivas. Okay, um, okay. let me see. Uh, my grandfather was about 22 when this photo was taken that were outside the family home in Chicago. That's all. Yeah, they are perfect. Thank you. Literally like that. Rivas and Noé. This photo is very old. I think in 19. This brother, the brother is Char and William. The family home in Chicago the world family in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very interesting. Noé and Rosalie. His grandfather is an incredible man. Yeah. Very interesting story. He's an incredible man. Rosalie and Daniel. My grandfather and two bro brothers, Charles and William. In the family home in Chicago, grandfather works for 27 in cinema. Yeah, that's it. Daniel? He's part of his grandfather. He's a great person. Mm -hmm. A great person. Yeah, that's it. So um, maybe we can have more information. Katia, you have some? I know you have more information. Um, I can say in it in Spanish. No, come on. Well, <laughs> whatever you remember. <laughs> okay. Um. The he started sell chocolate bar, mm. and. And I don't know. Yeah, but that, and, that's important. And, and grandfather is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> He's Mr. Incredible. Thank you. What about Jose? You have more information? Um, I hear teacher that basically that, that photo was taken in 19, in 1910 and 1910, right back in the days, basically when his grandfather 
was a young people, right? And that photo was taken outside of the family house back in the day in 1910, right? And someone got married with friends with someone, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, number, yeah. It. Yeah, thank you. Somebody got married with someone and so on, yeah. That's it. And let me show you this. Okay. Yeah, this photo is very old. I think it's from 19 and so on. Okay. I guess you know all of these words, but if you find a word that it's new or strange you can tell me something that uh, called my attention is that he started selling chocolate bars and soda drinks people watching the silent movies imagine those movies didn't have a sound it was silent like charlie chaplin or something like that right and finished as man the manager so he was escalating uh, different occupations different jobs okay so this is a very nice story y algo que todos eh, captamos he's an incredible man right good and we're about to finish we have nine minutes so for this we're going to have like a practice um we're going to Practice just one conversation. Solo vamos a practicar una conversación y nosotros y terminamos. Okay. So it says like this. Yes, Gustavo, tell me. Teacher, este, cree que podría mandar el audio al grupo. Okay, okay. I'm going to, to, to uh, send the audio. Okay, no problem. Gracias. Yes. Creo que también les va a ayudar, ¿verdad? Es, ese tipo de audios, ¿verdad? Que ustedes lo, los escuchen y pues eh, algo que quizás me gustaría, bueno, lo voy a decir mejor acá y después paso lista. Eh, lo de la práctica de la de esa conversación lo vamos a hacer después porque igual el tiempo va a pasar súper rápido. Eh, aunque po es posible que tengamos chance para esto. Algo que ayuda bastante, something that is really helpful is reading aloud leer en voz alta you don't imagine how important is that i was well i had some difficulties with my fluency when i was studying and even after finishing my career después de terminar mi carrera tuve problemas con la fluidez because you have the vocabulary you have the grammar but there's some things that are, are like limitations and you we are Surrounded by English. Estamos rodeados por el inglés. Movies, series, memes, los memes, music. And we are receiving information, but we don't produce. And, y a todos los que tenemos sesión uno a uno les digo esto. Recibimos mucha información, pero no la producimos. Es por eso que las speaking activities son tan importantes, porque ustedes están hablando. Okay? Ahora, si ustedes... If you read 30 seconds or one minute every day, imagine you're going to improve a lot. 30 segundos, un minuto que lean al día. Elijan cuatro o cinco líneas. Leanlas tres, cuatro, cinco veces. Grábense. Busquen el Google Translator si tienen dificultades y busquen informa eh, información que les guste. Sports, famous people, um, movies. Serious. Imagínense que a ustedes les gusta una serie. So you can find or you can look for descriptions or opinions about the series. Opiniones acerca de una serie. Ejemplo, a ustedes les gustó la serie esta de Dahmer. So you can look for opinions about the people in America about this series. Luego ustedes la leen y se graban con el celular. Grábense. Y se van a acostumbrar cada vez más a su voz y traten de sonar supernatural. Believe me, this is really, but really 
helpful. Esto ayuda como no tienen idea. Grábense y escúchense. Y pongan el, el traductor de Google si quieren. Y ahí se van a dar cuenta de que hay muchas palabras que las pronuncian súper bien. Y hay otras que vamos a ir mejorando poco a poco. I consider you have a very good English level. Considero que tienen una gran pronunciación. Tienen buena pronunciación. Han tenido buenos teachers. Y más que todo ustedes han puesto de su parte. But reading aloud, leer así en voz alta, créanme que ayuda bastante. No, I did say in my case, I read every day English phrases because I'm a mechanic. Okay, uh, no, you receive information, right, about uh, mechanics, details, codes, and some imperatives, right? Yeah, that's really important. Por eso que tienes mucho vocabulario. But mm -hmm, try to read aloud. Vamos a entrar a leer un poquito así en voz alta. Créanme que van a mejorar todavía más. We have... Voy a pasar lista. I'm going to check the attendance list. Listen. We have... Thanks. Thanks for advice. Yeah. You're welcome, my friend. So that's why I, I tell you, if you know the lyrics of a song, sing it. Tienen letra de una canción, cántenla. Así, aunque lo regañen en su casa. No problem. You have... This is like a song twist. Yes. <laughs> Sí, aunque digan, ya aburre. Esto es como un trabalenguas. El inglés en general es como un trabalenguas. ¿Ya? So, that's it. Después ustedes van a tener tanta fluidez que les va a dar risa. Ok, les va a dar risa como ustedes van a estar hablando inglés y van a estar pensando todavía en otras cosas. Ok, my friends. We have 17 clases. Tenemos 17 clases todavía para mejorar nuestra fluidez. I'm pretty sure, estoy súper seguro, you're going to improve a lot. Van a mejorar bastante. Ok, I'm going to check the attendance list, my friends. Ya se fueron las dos horas, ¿ok? And Adi, not here, right? Ana Cristina, um, and I don't know if you're here. If not, we go with Elias. Present teacher. Ok, Elias, eh, te quedas ahora con la sesión, please. Eh, porque la vez pasada estuvimos con Carlos Rivas, si no me equivoco. Ok, teacher. Ok, thank you. Eh, Rivas, hello. Present teacher. Thank you, my friend. Claudia Marcela. Okay, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Okay, thank you to you, David and Doris. Present teacher. Okay. Perfect. What about Evelyn? Present. Thank you, Graciela. Guillermo. Present teacher. Ok, very nice. José and John. Present, present teacher. Good night. Good night. Katia good night. and Maritza. Present and good night. Thank present. You. Thank you. Marvin not here. Noé Pérez and then Gustavo. Present teacher and good night. Thank good you. Night. Oh. Yeah. It's a pleasure, my friend. Okay, Gustavo Oscar. Present teacher, good night. Thank you. Present. Thank you. Uh, Rosalie Yvonne. Okay. Present and thank you for the advice. You're welcome, my friend. Okay, Susie, it's uh, listener. Okay, my friends, see you tomorrow. Ya casi llega fin de semana. Good night, my friends. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye, my friends. See you. Okay, Elias. Let's see what we have here. You already Hi, know. Hello. You already know what this is about, right? If you have some questions, if you have yeah. difficulties, or if you want to practice something, no problem, okay? Okay. Um, um, and my opinion is um, the classroom is very interesting. Um, Okay, mm, I have problems in pronunciation and listen.
Ok, ok, no problem, Elias, listen. Everybody, everybody has had problems with pronunciation and with the grammar and with everything. So hemos tenido problemas con eso, ok. Something that I like is that you try. And if you try, it's a good sign. Buena señal, si estás intentando, si estás probando, todo eso, good for you. Now, you tell sí, me. Sí, sí. Creo que eso que, que, que va a mandar este, los audios con, creo que la, la, las listening anteriores, creo que no, no se había compartido la, el, como que lo, lo que estábamos escuchando, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y sí, en sí. esta ocasión, y lo, lo, lo compartió, o no, no sé si yo no lo, no lo alcancé a escuchar, pero, o no lo, no lo vi, ¿verdad? Pero creo que ya con eso he compartido el, el, el párrafo más el audio. Creo que si, se, por lo menos yo, sí si voy a tratar de, de, de utilizar esa herramienta. Y, y como usted dice, entre más practiquemos, más este, eh, voy, a, voy, voy a aprender en las cosas que me hacen falta. Sí, Elías, fíjate que es primera vez que me piden que, que les envíe los audios, pero me parece muy buena idea. Lo voy a hacer. Sí. Eh, creo que la, se trata, mira, no tengas miedo ni te dé pena. Vos no, 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 claro. Y probar no. Y, y eso te va a hacer que genere más seguridad, ¿verdad? Entonces, sí, sí. Hay, ¿verdad? hay palabras que yo te voy a ir corrigiendo, te voy a decir de tal manera. ¿va? Por ejemplo, para decir sí. mi opinión, solo decir my opinion y ya. Ajá. ¿verdad? Okay. Mañana vamos a ver formas de, de, de presentar tu opinión, mañana lo vamos a hacer, pero eh, ¿tú, te, ¿tú escuchas música? ¿You listen music? ¿Ya? Yeah. Uh, yes. What kind um, of music? What type of music? Salsa, rock, cumbia, romantic, electronic, um, I don't know. Uh, romantic. Ok, romantic in English? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. Ok, ok. I need you to select some of the, the best songs for you. Okay. Try to sing yes. them. Intenta cantarlas, pero el coro. Listen. Uh, we have... La otra más complicada. Sí, sí, porque sometimes we want to learn the whole lyrics. Queremos aprendernos toda la letra. Y se puede. Yes, it is possible. But first, what you have to do is to learn just the chorus. Si te aprendes el coro, créeme que vas a avanzar un montón porque lo vas a pasar cantando y cantando. But no hay que cantarlo como nosotros creemos, sino como realmente es. Entonces se okay. trata uh -huh, de buscar, en el, por ejemplo, en el traductor de Google, el Google Translator, que hay una frase que te cuesta. Yes. E intentarla y la vas cantando porque es algo que te gusta. Y de ahí te vas a sí. dar cuenta que, porque eso me pasó a mí, poco a poco, You are increasing your vocabulary. In incrementas tu vocabulario. Estamos viendo unas oraciones y vos decís, mm, esta palabra ya la conozco, esta palabra sale en tal canción. Y, sí, sí, claro. ¿verdad? Creo que ya te ha pasado. No, no, y de lo, de lo que, que, que hemos estado este, viendo de Ken, de las de de terceras personas, eso sí, siento yo que le he entendido más en esta ocasión que en, la, en clases anteriores. Perfecto, que Lía. La tercera persona es que va, va, va a cambiar siempre lo que hemos visto del hub, del das. Uh -huh. Del hub, es correcto. Es uh -huh. correcto. Entonces, y me... hoy, este día, este sí estuve un poco complicado porque si tenía unas cosas ahí, estaba pendiente del trabajo. Por eso es que no, no pude poner. O sea, yo me puse como oyente, pero sí estuve presente en toda, en toda la clase. Uh -huh. Pero creo que hubo una ocasión, creo que me llamó y no, no contesté. Sí, Elías, es que lo que pasa es que yo, bueno, yo entiendo cuando pasan ocupadas y todo, yo te agradezco el esfuerzo que le pones, ¿verdad? Sé que hay otras compañeras que le, le, o compañeros que les toca un poquito más pesado, pero si sí. te dices cuenta, mi, mi clase es un poco activa. No, no, sí, sí, es bien interesante la clase, ¿no? Y me, Entonces, me gusta porque sí, te, te yo... Como usted dice, va a perder el miedo y sé que de aquí no pasa, de aquí si me va a corregir, está bien, yo no tengo ningún problema, al contrario, uh -huh. es, para, sí. es para sumar. Uh -huh. Excelente, Elías, este, uh -huh. qué bueno que te estén gustando las clases, yo sé que a veces toca sí, pesado, no, sí. pero, pero sí, este, sí. 
Recuerda que todos los teachers tienen diferentes metodologías, ¿verdad? Diferentes. Sí, sí, eso también. Y quizás uno el, el empeño que le, que le mete también tiene mucho que ver. Claro, claro, así es. Las speaking activities que yo envío, siempre Ah, prepararlas, no. ¿verdad? No, no, sí, sí, eso sí trato. Siempre estoy pendiente, tipo 8 o 9, pendiente Y, y si ahí te ver. das cuenta, y si te das cuenta, Elías, cuando vos preparas tu respuesta, tenés mucha más seguridad al momento que te Sí. toca la participación, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Ajá, entonces en, Sí, en sí. inglés, ajá, se escucha más pro, todo, o sea, es bastante bien, entonces de eso se trata, ¿verdad? Ir mejorando, así que, pues me alegra Elías, así que ánimo, cualquier cosa, cualquier duda, ahí está mi número, me puedes escribir y estamos para apoyar, ¿ok? Excelente Okay, okay. Good night. Elías, good night, descansa, see you tomorrow my friend, Thank you. bye Chao, bye. chao,